All right, so the narrator of Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption is the character of Red, and Red is a prisoner in Shawshank Prison, and it is a first-person narration, so he speaks from his point of view, and uh, even though it seems like he's not the main character of the story, uh, I would also say he is the primary protagonist, even though the story is mostly about Andy Dufresne. Uh, there's a connection or relationship between Andy and Red that is sort of the primary uh, relationship of the novel and that's what uh, I think we are meant to focus on when we're reading the text about the close connection that builds between these two characters. Um, Red can be seen as somewhat of a unreliable or fallible narrator and this just means that um, well in some texts uh, you can believe everything your narrator tells you. Uh, in some cases, uh, we have to sort of start questioning whether or not their narrative is completely trustworthy or whether there's sort of gaps or errors uh, or if they are outright lying. Um, Red's not a liar. That's not what I'm saying by calling him an unreliable narrator or a fallible narrator. I'm just saying that um, there are parts of his narrative that are only based on sort of hearsay and rumor and gossip and this is a reflection of the prison environment in which he is um, part of and uh, while his memory is reliable there is a sort of prison gossip system uh, communication system that is uh, largely based on sort of speculation and uh, there are kernel, kernels of truth within uh, the stories, but again, when you think about how prisoners maybe uh, exaggerate certain things or uh, it gets passed, information gets passed from one prisoner to another, things get uh, sort of blown out of proportion or exaggerated or they sound better than they were. Um, this is just part of the environment and um, there are moments when Andy Dufresne uh, seems larger than life. He becomes kind of a legendary or mythical figure almost. Um, and this is part of where uh, Red's narrator, narrati narration sort of becomes um, uh, fallible, right? So he is taking a kernel of a truth and then maybe stretching it or elaborating on it and making Andy seem like a uh, almost... Um, a legendary figure. Uh, so it's important to sort of understand that the prison system is part of the narration of Red's uh, perspective and gossip and hearsay and rumors these are all parts of uh, the, the sort of fragments of Red's narration. The setting for the story takes place uh, primarily in Shawshank prison and the setting spans many decades. So uh, Red's uh, sentence, uh, he was sentenced to life in prison uh, at the age of 20 and then he spends, or uh, he ends up spending 38 years in prison um, and he entered into the prison in 1939 around there. He mentions on the very first page um, that his uh, sentence was, you know, one of many headlines on the page uh, in addition to news of Hitler and Mussolini. Uh, so he's around 1939 is when he entered Shawshank Prison. And you do get to see some of the changes that occur within the prison system over the course of the time. And uh, there is some reflection on how uh, the prison system has worked in the past. Um, but a lot of the corruption stays the same and there is a sort of sense of dehumanizing of the prisoners on every level that continues uh, throughout uh, Red's stay in Shawshank. And if you've watched the film version, the prison is also sort of an interesting element of uh, the narrative. There are lots of sort of hidden areas, dark places where violence occurs, 
and it's also an interesting setting of the cells lining the walls of this uh, old-fashioned prison. Um, and we can think about why the prison is set up the way that it is. Each cell is sort of, you're able to see, if you are a prison guard, you can sort of look down the hallways and see inside the cells. The men are always visible. So there is no sort of privacy or um, sense of your own space, right? It seems as if you are always on display. And part of this strategy, again, is for the prisoners to internalize the penal system and internalize the structure of power so that they uh, start to sort of take up and discipline themselves in a way uh, by always being um, aware that they're always being watched. Uh, and it again, it's somewhat uh, dehumanizing in the way that they are sort of um, treated by the authorities within this prison system. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about how uh, characters like Andy and Red are sort of beaten down, their inner spirit is broken, and they have to sort of build themselves up uh, from the inside out and try to maintain a hold on their spirit and sense of self when the prison attempts to sort of break them down and destroy uh, their inner spirit, their inner light, whatever you want to call that. So before we get too much into the details of the text, I want us to just think about the prison system as a social institution and then to understand uh, some of the difficulties uh, and problems that exist within this organization, this social institution. Um, so on your own you can again think of uh, what you already know about a prison. So what do you already know about um, how a prison works? And I also want to know your opinion of whether or not you think prisons are effective. Why or why not? Uh, so I'm going to be posting this question to the discussion forum and I want you to sort of uh, just brainstorm, note your uh, what you already know or what you feel about the social institution as a prison, of the prison, and whether or not you think it is an effective establishment. So um, we'll talk about this uh, repeatedly throughout our discussion of Shawshank, but I just wanted to get your initial ideas about this question. Okay, so one of the things that we can think about is the power structure of the prison system itself. And I've drawn this uh, triangle as a representation of the hierarchy that exists within uh, the penal system, so the system of punishment and legal system that we have uh, within our society. So at the very top and the smallest amount, so the most elite uh, part of this legal system is the lawmakers. So they would have the most power within the system. They uh, create the laws and determine who is a criminal and who is innocent, who is right, who is wrong, um, that type of thing. So this would be your uh, government um, officials who are passing laws and determining uh, whether or not your behaviors are right and wrong. So this would also be um, the judicial system. So at, they're at the very top. So very few people have the opportunity to have um, to make laws right to determine what is right or wrong. Most of us are outside of that system. And then within the legal system we also have the warden. So within prison uh, a prison system like Shawshank, Shawshank prison, uh, there are wardens and these are sort of the administrative uh, men who are in charge of running that prison and they are given power over the guards and the prisoners so uh, they would sort of occupy a more elite space and have the more more power than uh, the guards who work for them or the prisoners who are again uh, somewhat powerless within the system. And then under the warden we have guards uh, who are the ones who are sort of the physical force 
of the warden. So the warden's not the one who's going to be physically punishing the prisoners. He's just sort of the one behind the scenes who is instructing the guards what to do. The guards are the ones who are actually sort of um, doling out punishment, physical punishment, and uh, are responsible for a lot of the sort of violence that the prisoners experience. Uh, so if there's any beatings or something, it's the guards that are uh, taking part in that. And then finally, the prisoners, which make up the largest segment of the population, uh, yet are the most powerless within the system, is are the prisoners themselves. And um, Andy is an innocent man, uh, wrongfully accused of his crime of murder and placed into this prison system. So he is very much uh, a victim of the system and a victim within the prison itself. So he becomes sort of victimized and he is, uh, he begins the story quite powerless and vulnerable to uh, the violence within the system, violence and corruption. And he slowly gains power, but it is, it comes from sort of from inside. He uses his strengths which are, you know, his intelligence and his just his inner strength, his willingness to not give up and to uh, maintain hope. And uh, he uses that to gain power within uh, the system. And even amongst the prisoners themselves, there will, there will be sort of a power structure, a hierarchy that's built on one's reputation within the prison. Red, we know, is a is a prisoner who has a lot of connections. He's the guy who can get things for you. So he has a lot of sort of uh, clout or esteem or status within um, amongst the prisoners themselves. Andy comes in and he has very little. He's a new a newbie, right? He's green or the, what they call in the film fresh fish. Um, so he has no power within or amongst the prisoners and he is uh, vulnerable to uh, uh, many assaults. So he gets assaulted sexually and uh, just uh, physical violence. Uh, so he's a victim of the prisoners, he's a victim of the guards, and then of the warden and the whole system uh, is sort of set against Andy's, um, Andy's sort of pursuit of his own life, but he yet he uh, is able to sort of struggle and maintain a sense of his own inner strength and this is what helps him sort of survive this uh, experience. So one of the interesting things that King I think is commenting on in his text is the uh, sort of hypocrisy that exists within the prison system. So those who are powerful are not uh, helping others. They are really very much um, self-serving, selfish, and only look, looking after their own self-interest. So the wardens are, they exploit their prisoners, they'll exploit Andy's intelligence and use him as a kind of tool uh, for their own self-gain. He's an intelligent banker and they will take advantage of that, um, but they're only doing so to sort of uh, make money for themselves. And this is part of the corruption that occurs within the prison itself. And then the prisoners are sort of beaten down. Uh, they're viewed by everybody, the guards, the warden, the lawmakers, as being expendable. They're sort of viewed as useless, as the scum of the earth, and as um, unredeemable, right? So the view that prisoners have no uh, sense of um, use, they're useless, they're, um, they're just merely a number and they have no redeeming values whatsoever they're just a throwaway uh, person so there's that assumption that occurs within this prison system and this idea of rehabilitation it, and within the prison is somewhat of a facade that the prison sort of suggests that they do but they don't really do and red will address this sort of hypocrisy uh, in his um, in his sort of narration but the prisoners themselves are viewed as sort of expendable and worthless and Andy has a different perspective of the prisoners. He wants to teach Red and the other men that they have an intrinsic value as human beings first 
Uh, they're not just criminals, they're not just useless or worthless people, and he wants to teach them that.